your dogs or a game of the house. Alright, some morning thoughts for us. So. Alright, so some uh, random morning thoughts. So, basically, uh, just uh, some thoughts on my mind. So, some thoughts about fitness, the New Year's, food, etc. So, this is essentially just advice or some thoughts I'm gonna share, like basically some thoughts or ideas that I wish I had access to when I was starting off everything in terms of fitness, diet, blah, 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 blahs. And once again, this is just my thoughts, my opinion. I might be wrong, I might be right, whatever it is, at least uh, I was not playing you and uh, telling the truth, right? So, um, some thoughts. So first and foremost, um, what is the best way to work out, food, etc. Um, I'll just kind of stream out my thoughts. So first and foremost, I think actually the ideal is kind of this like quote quote one rep max style of uh, weightlifting. I first learned this from my best friend uh, Nassim Taleb who introduced it in his uh, anti-fragile book and essentially you know you don't go for reps reps are for suckers essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to lift the heaviest maximal weight you can successfully off the floor or the rack once and the goal is not to go for reps but just to do a single rep a single repetition. When you say rep, it just means rep. It's, it's, it's short for repetition. Um, but you know what's funny? Because I think uh, one of my friend's brother, he's actually from the UK, he said, one thing that you Americans like to do is you like to abbreviate everything and just kind of turn it into just kind of a slang. So it's like, I'm like, oh, you like DDR? He's like, what's the DDR? And I'm like, oh, He's like, Dance Dance Revolution? I love Dance Dance Revolution. So I think moving forward, I think uh, even just like a good pro tip for everybody is um, don't abbreviate things, rather just uh, say say the full thing. Uh, academics love to do this too, is that they'll just, uh, <laughs> they'll abbreviate things and assume like you kind of know what you're talking about. Um, the reason why this is not good is that even if you're kind of in the know, I think uh, by abbreviating things, um, even people in the know might not always know what you're talking about. So, anyways, um, thinking about like you know personal records and stuff like that. So, um, so for example. Uh, you know, people is like, um, you know, the... now I'll just, I'll just be, I'll just be blunt, right? So you know, people's like, oh, five by five, strong, uh, chase, chest day, uh, 10 reps of four reps. Okay. Don't, don't do none of that silliness, right? So what you want to do instead is, uh, you take the heaviest weight and you just try to successfully lift it once. So for example, um, uh, the lifts I recommend is uh, like for example the rack pull the atlas lift or the squat hold as I call it so essentially that uh, the rack rack pull um, Is you go to the gym you go to the squat rack or whatever rack they have right and on the side They have those little safety pins um, You essentially put it you adjust the the pins to a height that feels comfortable to you and you just stand close to it and then you just throw on slap on the the weights on top of the barbell and you could just successfully see if you could just pull it up right and you don't have to shrug your shoulders or anything just try to stand up so imagine like if you took a deadlift and you just cut out the last portion of the lockout position and you held that position so that's almost like I don't even know if that's a rack pull then it's like it's kind of like this interesting kind of like maybe like hybrid model where it's part, um, 
you know, <clears throat> I guess it's it's part rack pull and it's also part deadlift. Um, I'll, I'll try to show some more videos just demonstrating this and what I mean. But anyways, um, so So first and foremost, uh, the the rack pull, right? So, um, so like a simple way, right? So before I work out, I usually do like some yoga esque types of um, stretching, like pigeon pose, dive bombers, yoga push ups, Hindu push ups, whatever's, and um, and then you go to the bar. So I'll tell you what I do. I go to the bar. I put on, and um, I'm gonna use some plate uh, slang. When I say a plate, I mean a 45 pound plate. If you're abroad in the overseas, usually they use 20 kilogram plates or sometimes 25 kilogram plates. But for for American sake, let's say the, the 45 pound plate, which is the standard measure. So you put on a plate, um, a 45er on each side, 45 pounder on each side. And you just try to lift it up once and you just put it down. Then you throw on another 45 pound on each side of the barbell lift up once, all right, toss on another one, that's three on each side, I lift up once, toss, and this is actually a pro tip, is when you're doing rack pulls, um, when you're doing rack pulls, um, essentially, Once you get up to like four, four, um, sorry, um, three 45 pound plates on each side, and then you're just using a neutral grip, which is both hands kind of like this. Then, you know, slap on some uh, chalk, some weightlifting chalk. So uh, Cindy just got me for Amazon. It actually comes in a big squeezy bottle. Um, I actually really like using that big squeezy bottle because um, it, uh, It's a lot less messy than the the traditional powdery stuff, and it's a lot less uh, powdery than the traditional stuff. And it's just it just it actually works better. So so get the get the big ass bottle in the the tube, the the liquid chalk for weightlifting. It's it's quite good, right? So you get that, and then after that. Uh, Switch to a mixed grip where one hand is underhand and the other hand is overhand. And I mean, I'm a righty. I mean, everyone's a little different. I'm a righty. Typically what I do is my left hand is overhand. My right hand is underhand is, is typically what I do. Um, I think it's it's gonna be a little bit different for everybody. So you just kind of <clears throat> want to to experiment. And uh, then, then I go for uh, four plates on each side, which is what, 405 pounds total, I guess, um, right? And then I toss on another plate, five plates. And then actually, um, pro tip too, is when you get to the heavier weights, um, try to switch up your mix grip. So at four plates, I do mix grip with my left hand is underhand and my right hand is overhand. And that's my less dominant uh, mix grip. And then five plates, left hand over, right hand over, and then my then um, then I throw on another forty-five pound plate. Um, so that's what six plates on each side, and then and then I do the my stronger grip, which is the the left hand over and my right hand under, and I pull that. And then currently near my max is around. Uh, seven plates on each side. I even know how much that is. So it's, it's actually interesting because I would actually recommend uh, don't so much try to track the total poundage of the thing. Rather, it's easier to just track um, the plates. And also uh, mentally, it's a little easier to remember um, depending on the gym and the, the side of the gym you go to. Sometimes they're colored, sometimes they're not. So for example, the gym I go, a 45 pound plate is a big red thing. A 35 thing uh, pounder is a blue thing. 
a 25 pounder is a yellow thing, a 10 pounder is um, green, and that's pretty much it. So it's actually better for you to take a mental note of the color combination, how much you put on rather than the, the total poundage. Um, and then, and then you know, you try to hype yourself up, you slap yourself in the face, uh, you know, scream really loud, grunt, don't listen to music, hype yourself up instead, and then just give it, give it your all. If you hit it up, that's cool. If you don't, that's, that's totally cool too. Um, a pro tip too is that like, I actually, this is what I thought, this is what I think. If you really, really want to get super duper strong at the gym and you want to really hit new personal records and maxes, I would actually say don't record yourself. Um, a lot of guys I see now, they use the iPhones and the tripods to record themselves. Um, and I think, I think that's fine, but my critique of doing that is, I mean, typically guys always want to upload it straight to social media, Instagram, whatever, but, uh, and they just spend too much time re-reviewing the videos, like checking their form or whatever. But I actually think it's a big distraction. Like even I found for myself, if I'm trying a really, really heavy lift, that's a little bit quote, quote dangerous or I've never tried it before. Actually recording myself is a positively dangerous thing because it kind of fucks with my focus where rather than kind of getting to the Zen zone just doing it, often what happens is, uh, you, you know, you're like, you're about to lift the heavy thing and then at the back of your head you're just like, oh, is the angle right or, you know, is it, am I gonna catch this on camera? And that loss of concentration is is, is very poor. Um, uh, if you really do want to record yourself, uh, I do, is I recommend just getting um, the cheapest GoPro. I mean, there's even a GoPro mini now. I would get the GoPro mini. Get the GoPro mini, just shoot it the smallest resolution, what, 1080p, 24 FPS, and shoot ultra, ultra wide mode you know, you don't have to get a mount or anything. Just put it in a little corner and try not to look at it. Turn off the front-facing LCD. Well, I mean, the, Go the GoPro Mini doesn't even have an LCD screen, so that's that's a good thing. And just um, do it that way. And you just want to make it as unobtrusive as possible. The reason why I record myself is, um, I mean, I think I have a very interesting, unique perspective and approach to things. And, you know, proof is in the pudding, right? So I just want to share it with others to show that I'm not blowing smoke up people's butts. And, you know, you know, is EK on the roids? Is EK on the juice? Okay, the only drug that I do is uh, black coffee, right? Get some Death Wish coffee. Just try the the medium one. I think I actually prefer the dark roast. Just just, just get the dark, and also the branding on the dark is better. Black on black on red. Um, also, I do it all intermittent fasting. I've done this the last seven years. I'm fine. Um, he's like, how's your digestion, bro? I'm like, fine. Um, I, I, I poop at least once a day, <laughs> uh, if you're curious. So, typically at the gym, so you don't stick up your own house. Actually, this is a fun thing, too. I've been actually walking to the gym, and walking to the gym is good because it actually better stimulates your bowels. I almost wonder if modern-day man is so constipated because we just don't walk around enough. So if you find yourself constipated, I mean, like, one of my New Year's resolutions last year was try to walk at least 30,000 steps a day. Uh, I don't think I ever hit it. Maybe one day when I was at UCLA, I might have hit like 29,000 steps. Uh, I just walk around campus all, all day. But uh, I'd never met a depressed person who walks 30,000 steps a day. Um, shout out to my mailman, Jimmy. He's, uh, he's the goat. So, um, so that the, the rack pull. So I would actually recommend doing the rack pull instead of a deadlift because uh, a, um, I mean, I'm like a little bit cool, cool taller. I'm like, I think I'm around like 5'11", 5'10 and a half, 5'10 and three quarters. <laughs> uh, and whenever I do a deadlift off the floor, I mean like everyone's bodily proportions is different, but it just feels like really kind of awkward. And I've done this for a long time too, right? So I'm not, I'm not a noob, right? Something that was better was when I was at my monkey fit gym in uh, Phnom Penh, Cambodia. There was the open hex bar with the really high bars. That was actually way better. I actually really liked it, but alas, my gym doesn't have it no more. So, and actually this is a thing that's interesting with diet, health, fitness, everything. Oftentimes, it is the lack of things or the lack of equipment which actually forces you to innovate. Even a new thought I had too, right? So I've been doing heavy dumbbell presses off the floor 
without a bench, right? And you just do a crazy arch, uh, neutral grip, and you just push it up. Just Google, um, just Google or YouTube uh, Air Kim floor dumbbell press. And it's 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 kind of tricky because once I just did 105 pound uh, dumbbells the other day. It's actually um, the difficult thing is once you get that heavy and you're trying to pull on top of your thigh and try and push it up, right? You actually need somebody to spot you and help you. But I'm like, can I invent some sort of machine or some sort of special type of bar that wouldn't need that? Kind of how like they um, uh, invented the the trap bar, the open hex bar that would ha that, that that has the stands. I'm like, that's that's pretty genius. But that's just one of my thoughts. Man, it's it's crazy. It's like it's like. <laughs> Um, it's like, is EK even into photography anymore? I'm like, yeah, I just, you know, I always have my Rico GR3X in my front pocket, right? It's just, I think people just cannot understand me because like, I'm into so many things. Like, I'm into photography, street photography, photographing sand. I'm like, so backlogged with my photos. Um, I'm getting really interested in diet, health, exercise, fitness, and everything, entrepreneurship. I'm like... Man, there's not enough hours in a day for me to to do or attempt everything that I want to do. But alas, say la vie, right? So, oh, also, if you want some uh, consulting or fitness helps or whatever, just shoot me an email, eric at ericim.com. I'll get back to you within um, two years. <laughs> so, um, so heavy dumbbell presses, and once again, just go for just go for single reps. Right? So yesterday, what I did was, um, you know, and of course, you know, you do some warm ups, the broomstick stretch. The, also, um, a pro tip is there's these things called like the battle ropes, I guess, the heavy ones. Also, do the shoulder dislocators, whatever. Uh, or just go on YouTube, search Eric Kim Warm Up. I think I've done a few videos on that. And uh, so, get on the floor, right, arch your back, and push it up. The 70 pounders first, put it back. And then, my tip is just jump up 10 pounds every single time. So, do the 70 pounds. Grab the 80 pounds, push out once, just one reps. Never do more than one rep, you don't need to. Um, 80 pounder, one rep, put it back. 90 pounder, one rep, put it back. 100 pounder, one rep, put it back. And then my current max is 105, so 105. And then push, push with all your strength. And then uh, even if you can get off the floor like an inch or a centimeter, I think that's, that's fine. I've actually found that um, pressing motions are probably not good, but they're a good accessory workout. Um, I've actually found that uh, the good thing with uh, doing heavy dumbbell presses and arching my back like crazy and then pushing it up, I think it actually strengthens something in my back. I'm not quite sure what, but it helps. Um, and uh, people say, oh, you're gonna hurt your back. Like, no, I've never used a belt in my life. I've never used silly straps in my life. And I've never used stupid pre-workout. That's like the new biggest scam. Like I actually started weightlifting ever since I was like, um, ever since I was uh, 12 years old. I was a little fat kid in uh, Bayside, New York. Shout out to my friends uh, Spen Spencer, Aditya, and also John, and all the the whole crew. Um, and also like getting to bodybuilding when I was in college. We didn't even have a pre-workout thing. That's like the newest biggest game essentially it's just like I think it's artificial sweeteners and or real sweeteners and just a shitload of caffeine I mean just drink bl black coffee a it's cheaper and it's also um, I mean my own honest big thing about um, biggest critique against the pre-workout I think it just makes you fat because a lot of the, they add sugar or asparamatine or fake sweeteners whatever so yeah but coke zero has zero kills I'm like it's still sweet it still makes you fat because your body taste and senses the sweetness and therefore it still spikes your insulin levels up so you're still gonna get fat um so yeah it's not good and the only reason like i've i've observed um <laughs> for a while i was really into like watching the this um big boy you know trap bar deadlifting a thousand pounds whatever and he always downs it so i mean honestly dudes are just trying to um sell their products and i don't know i just it's so funny too because the best way to dissuade people is not like, oh it's not healthy for you it's going to give you a heart attack nobody cares about that right um the best reason why not to do steroids or testosterone and other weird injections or oral things whatever it's like just can't get your can't get your wee wee up 
<laughs> Can you imagine? It's cause funny, it's like all these dudes trying to get super swole. So it's like, oh you know, I'm gonna sleep with all you know, pick up all these chicks, I'm get super swole and sleep with all these pretty pretty girls, whatever. But can you imagine you're like super duper jacked, right? And swole. And let's say you get all the ladies and you just, but you take testosterone or steroids. And then imagine you finally get to bed and you can't even get it up. They got popped some Viagra. <laughs> so, um, oh, another side note. Uh, some thoughts on CrossFit. So, okay, I've... I've actually seen some people do CrossFit, witnessed some CrossFit classes, etc. Um, the reason why I would actually, I'm actually anti CrossFit is okay, first, take a look at Greg, uh, Greg Glassman, who's the founder, ex CEO. Um, he uh, essentially, if you're curious, right, he invented CrossFit, Greg Glassman, G R E G space G L A S S M A N, Glassman. I mean, his ancestry, his grandparents probably made glass. Um, I'm like, <laughs> just Google it. It's like, does Greg Glassman even work out? I'm like, this guy looks like a wimp. Like a skinny, skinny fat. I don't know. Maybe he does two push-ups a day, maybe. And this is, um, this is a, just a simple thought, right? Never trust the thoughts or the opinions of somebody who doesn't actually do the th said thing themselves, right? Or, in other words, <laughs> don't don't trust um, a personal trainer who's less fit than you, right? And yeah, like I mean, just take a look at the guy. It's just like you see recently, he's, he's, dude's got a double chin. He looks t totally like a wimp. He's like, yeah, but he has a good program. I'm like, yeah, I hear it's like <laughs> it's kind of like. Who would you rather tr trust? King Leonidas and the 300 in terms of courage and fighting ability or the skinny fat loser who's studied all the kung fu art books and all the Bruce Lee movies and is an expert on the things but he weighs 300 pounds, is over 50% body fat percentage, has never touched a barbell in his life, right? It's kind of like trying to ask the advice of uh, a guy on proper, um, proper sexual form who has watched a million porns in his life, but has actually never bedded a girl. This is actually a funny thing too. This is where reality is different from kind of uh, media. So for example, um, let's consider, right? If you if you dip into the Google incognito and open up some prawn, right? Dip into the red tube, um, you porn whatever you're into, right? Everything's well lit, right? It's like super bright lights, super zoomed in whatever right but truth be told um if you actually you know do the do the thing with the lady right um or the dude whatever you're into i'm i'm all about the lgbtq qq twos um it's dark right you don't want to do it with the lights on it's like I don't think it's actually natural. It's like you do with the lights off, right? So the lights aren't on. So then what the sensations you get is actually not visual. It's more like um, sensory, your hands, your body, etc. Um, don't do it. You don't do it with the lights on. So anyways, um, this is just a simple. Th oh, another another pro tip. So um, uh, I played I played uh, American football back in high school. Sophomore year, I played outside linebacker. Um, junior year, I played um, inside linebacker. And you know, you, all these fat dudes, you know, watching football and know all the stats and they have beards and wear hats and, you know, have beer bellies and drink beer and know all the stats and they, they yell at the, um, at the wide receivers for fumbling the ball, whatever. But I'm like, the thing that's so interesting is when you watch football on television, you have this omnipotent God view, POV of everything that's happening. but. What's difficult for people who has actually never played real, real football in their real lives is when you're putting on a real football helmet, your fucking line of vision is just like, 
like this. And so even like I've never I never played wide receiver, but essentially the way that a wide receiver actually in reality ca uh, catch the ball, they just fucking sprint for their lives a certain thing, and they just kind of and then you also have pads, right? So you, your mobility isn't so good, right? You just kind of stretch out your your hands, and you kind of try to look over your shoulder, you can't see shit, and then you try to to grab the ball, and you're also sprinting super duper fast. So I think it was also Nassim Taleb and Greg, was it? <laughs> Gerd Gerzinger about heuristics talked about like even in um, baseball right like the way that somebody catches the ball isn't to mentally calculate some nonsense their head they just kind of run towards the ball and they just kind of stick out their hands right so also that's why whenever people tried to teach you cool cool proper form in weightlifting or whatever powerlifting whatever it's often not very useful you just kind of have to do it and just kind of adjust as you go because once again everyone's body proportions are different and i think that's a, a good thing and even i think it was um andy roddick you know the dude who had the babylon fastest serve whatever he said the second you ask me about my my serve or my tennis uh, serve swing what form it's going to go to shit because once you start thinking about your form then actually it starts to degrade um, so I think one of the best ways to approach things is you just have to experiment and just uh, try it out for yourself and you just kind of uh, figure it out as you go. Um, and oh, so some other thoughts on weightlifting, right? So also what you want to do is, these are just some simple heuristics, is reduce the range of motion, but increase the weight. So once again, my squat hold atlas lift, you just kind of get under it and just kind of lift it up a super tiny bit. And uh, that's essentially uh, all you have to do and all you need. Um, and just even holding seven plates on your shoulders, it's gonna do something to your legs. I mean, my, li my thighs and my legs are out of control, my spine, my back, Feel like a demigod so it looks like it's doing something right um and i would also recommend at the gym never touch no machines cardio i think cardio is nonsense just don't do cardio um i would actually recommend don't do anything in which you have to sit down or actually even when you're lying on your back and if you're gonna lie on your back don't do it on a flat bench just do it on the floor which is actually a lot naturaler -er. <laughs> and people say yeah don't swing don't use i'm like don't use the momentum. I'm like, because Americans are so into this idea of cheating, right? It's like, you don't want to cheat. You want to have proper form. I'm like, there's no such thing as proper form. You're all um, having a bunch of uh, nonsense, right? And people's like, how often should you train? So um, I'm kind of uh, unorthodox on this. If you want a, if you want a billionaire body, I would actually say work out at least twice a day. One day I actually even worked out three times a day. Um, and I just fell asleep like a bag of rocks. So think about it this way. If you have chronic insomnia, whatever, I could guarantee you, sign up for core power or local gym, whatever, um, uh, yoga place. Do a yoga scope class and or a fusion class. Do it back to back. That's what uh, me and Cindy did. And then later that day, go to the gym, do some hype lifting, one rem max lifting. And then in the evening, eat a shitload of uh, beef ribs from Costco Business Center. I could guarantee you, you'll pass out like a bag of rocks, right? Also, ironically enough, um, if you want to really conquer insomnia, don't drink alcohol, don't smoke weed. I mean, certainly weed helps people fall asleep, but I think it's it's a crutch, it's not a long-term solution. Um, and yeah, some other thoughts too is, uh, you know, lift without headphones on, no AirPods, AirPods Pros, AirPods Pros Max. I mean, certainly there's times where the gym music does suck, but the good thing too is um, some other pro tips is if you want to get strong, like go to the strongest guy at the gym who has the biggest deadlift squat, whatever, and just ask them for some uh, tips. Like, hey, how did you get so strong? And just ask them for, for advice. So actually social strength is important. I would never want to just work out.